Katie Grabowski, you are the Colorado State Director for MUFON, uh, Mutual UFO Network. Uh, that's uh, you're the you're the State Director for Colorado. This is a national group. Briefly describe what your group does. Um, basically, um, when people have a sighting of something they can't under, uh, uh, explain, they will fill out a report and send it to MUFON on their website. And we have a great team of field investigators here in the state that will receive the case. And we will contact the witness within 48 hours, um, interview them. Um, sometimes it, it will go out on property and take photos and collect evidence. A lot of the week we, work we do though is online. We do flight radar 24, heavens above. Um, so we get a, a gamut from lights in the sky, Starlink satellites to truly unknowns. Most of the time we can predict 85% of the time what it is the witness saw, lens flares, birds in the sky, but that leaves the remaining 15% that remains unexplained. And I, I wanna talk about that. Your group actually takes a very scientific approach to these investigations. Yes, we certainly do. We, um, like I said, we do our due diligence to try and explain to the witness what it is they saw. And most of the time it has a very terrestrial, um, you know, conclusion to the report, but sometimes we're left scratching our heads. <laughs> So your, your group actually, your investigators will actually physically go out, interview people and talk to people like a regular field investigator then? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes we even collect soil samples and, you know, different evidence. So take photos, use our K2 meters and try to actually find a scientific explanation as to what's going on here. How, how long have you been doing this for? Um, I joined MUFON in 2012. I joined, I came right in as a field investigator. You go through a gamut of training. Um, there's MUFON University. So you take a lot of classes, you have to take a test, you do a background check. Um, we have continuous um, field investigator training every month. So you're continuously getting educated, um, you know, interview processes and whatnot. Um, but I joined to really look for answers to experiences that I had as a young girl out in Elbert County, Colorado. Yeah, and what were those experiences? Um, out in um, Elbert County, Colorado, between 1975 and 1978, um, there were hundreds of cattle mutilations. Linda Moulton Howe did a film, Strange Harvest, that talked a lot about that. But on top of that, there were a lot of UFO sightings, interceptors that crashed, uh, paranormal activity going on, just really high strangeness. If anybody's heard of the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, it was very similar to that. Um, the height of it, like I said, was 1975 to 1978. And I've just been researching and looking for um, explanations to the, that phenomenon. So you've you've been you've been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, uh, there, let's talk about the report that's due out to Congress that's supposed to hit at least by uh, June 25th. Uh, regarding UAPs and UFOs. I bet a lot of people in the UFO community that you're a part of are highly anticipating uh, this report. I know your opinion does not reflect all of MUFON, but what's your, what's your personal thought about this report coming out? Yeah, I think, you know, my personal report and many people I talk to within the UFO community are a little apprehensive and they're a little, um, First of all, I'd like to say we're happy that this topic is in the news and it's in the news often, almost daily now. And so it's validating the work we do. Um, and so that's a wonderful thing. And I'm glad the topic is getting recognition finally. But I think um, a lot of the people I talked to, including myself, I feel like you know there's a lot of buildup to it. And I'm not sure it's gonna be explosive of information as we'd like it to be. Um, so, you know, we're all kind of collectively holding our breath, see what's going to come out. Um, either way, um, it's, it's a good thing for the topic and um, the information needs, it's about time that we were told the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. with, with the recent headlines uh, surrounding this report and, and the very interesting videos that have uh, been coming out, have you seen an increase in people uh, join MUFON here in Colorado? Um, we have, and right now we have 20 open cases um, and they run the gamut. You know, when somebody reports a case, they'll tell you, you know, what the shape of the craft is they saw. So we're getting some Tic Tacs, some triangles, oblong craft, but we have definitely seen an uptick in cases. And I really have to believe, number one, they typically go up in the summertime, spring and summer. More people are outside, they're camping, they're looking at the stars. Um, but also I think all the 
the reports in the news and the media, people are just looking up and watching more than they ever were before. So we're quite busy in the state of Colorado. Yeah, just, just, just this week, I was I was at my front porch and I noticed a bright light and I was like, you know, it's too it's too early to see Venus to the West. And it turned out to be a weather balloon, but I was I was intrigued. <laughs> and, you know, given all this uh, UFO and UAP, UAP news coming out these days, it's you, you do look up at the sky more uh, these days. Uh, there's been a lot of commentary surrounding this report regarding the stigma for pilots to come forward uh, with sightings. Let's talk about that stigma. You know, just talking about uh, UFO investigations, just talking about uh, these reports, you know, prompts a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, chuckles among people. How do you swim against that stigma? Well, you just, um, you get brave and you start the conversation. Uh, <clears throat> I actually just took um, my son yesterday to the um, Air Museum over there in Lowry, and you know they have wonderful volunteers that are uh, retired military that flew these missions and these jets in Vietnam. And I just flat out asked yesterday, so have you, you know, with all the news reports, have you ever seen anything strange in the sky? Some are willing to talk to you. Some are still a little hesitant, but you need to break through. And he, you know, he said that he had known other pilots that have seen some unusual things in the sky. So the stigma is starting to lighten up a little bit. In fact, every now and again, I'll have somebody contact me and say, hey, all these years has pa have passed. I'm ready to tell you what I experienced. And so um, that's a wonderful thing. And I actually told my son, I'm like, hey, I should kind of get my card out there and see if I could get more of these retired yeah. vets that talk to me about some things that they saw, you know. Yeah. Um, it's really fascinating. Yeah, and especially with the news reports and these pilots that have appeared on on sixty minutes talking about what they saw. That adds credibility to their Absolutely. to their yeah. position too. Um, coming back to UFO reports in Colorado, we definitely have our share of UFO history in our state. Uh, I, I know this is probably a tough question, but what's what's the one case that really sticks out in your mind? that does not meet logical explanation, the one case that you believe that, hey, you know, there's there's something here. Right, well, you know, first of all, we have the gamut of all the mutilation hype and Snippy the horse out in Alamosa, but we have a very credible witness, um, Dr. Leo Sprinkle, who is a pioneer in the field and how he got started for over 40 years ago was a, a couple of very credible sites out in Boulder, Colorado. Um, this was in the mid 60s. Um, very strange maneuvers. Um, so, you know, the credibility of a witness is important. Um, the five observables when it comes to um, the way these craft maneuver in the sky is very important. You know, it's, it's one thing to see a satellite cruise across the sky, but when it stops, darts off, you know, or cloaks, these type of things, it, it makes it, uh, it goes way up on the uh, credibility and interest scale for sure. Yeah. So Boulder has its fair share of sightings. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. When, when you, when you tell people what you do, uh, and you know, you, you, you meet these skeptics that are very skeptical, uh, yeah. about, you know, about probably about what you do and, you know, they say, you know, everybody has an iPhone these days. Why haven't we had any good conclusive video evidence of UFOs? Uh, what's your response to that? Well, I'm right there with them. I, I, I'll tell you, um, I have ebbed and flowed on the reality of sightings, especially when it comes to abductions of people. And I mean, there's sometimes I'm like, wow, is there really anything to this? But I'm telling you, I, I'm a researcher by heart. I love to research. I love to dig in documents. And um, I'm finally, after all these years, 100% convinced that there is definitely something to this phenomenon. And not only that, but another thing that keeps me, wow, yeah, there's, there's something to this. Because as you get higher up and the more you dig, there's some really interesting people that are involved in the cover-up of this phenomenon. And also, not only that, but also in the push to kind of do this slow drip disclosure, which I think is happening now. And if there was nothing to the phenomenon, this wouldn't be happening. So, you know, there are so many great credible cases in pilots and police officers and multiple witnesses, you know, around the world that there, there's just no way that there's nothing to this. In fact, this phenomenon, I mean, goes back to the beginning of time of humanity, you know, that these things were spotted, so. Yeah.
Uh, well, always a fascinating topic. I appreciate your time, Katie, uh, with talking with me for talking with me. So we'll see what this report says. And I think we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch. And I'd like to come back to you and uh, get your reaction uh, when this report comes out. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to seeing what the report says too. I'm like everybody else. We'll wait and see. So thank I'm excited. You. I'm excited about it. I'm pumped. <laughs> cool.